Hey everyone, I am Rohani Sola. So for today's video, we will be discussing on you some important thing about muscular system and human body. But before we jump in into formal discussion, here are the objectives of our lecture. If you're getting interested to know, just continue watching until the end of the video. Does the word muscle make you think of the biceps of a weightlifter like the man in the picture above? Muscles such as biceps that move the body are easy to feel and see, but they are not the only muscles in the human body. Many muscles are deep within the body. They form the walls of internal organs such as the heart and stomach. So, you can flex your biceps like a bodybuilder, but you cannot control the muscles inside you. It is a good thing that they work on their own without any conscious effort of your part, because movement of this muscle is essential for survival. So, what is muscular system? Muscular system is an organ system consisting of skeletal, smooth, and cardiac muscles. It permits movement of the body, maintains posture, and circulates blood throughout the body. The muscular system's invertebrates are controlled through the nervous system, although some muscles, such as the cardiac muscle, can be completely autonomous. So together with the skeletal system, it forms the musculoskeletal system which is responsible for movement of the human body. So did you know that there are more than 600 skeletal muscles and they make up about 40% of a person's body weight? So when the nervous system signals the muscle to contract, group of muscles work together to move the skeleton. And that signals and movements are nearly involuntary. Yet they do require conscious effort. However, humans do not need to concentrate on individual muscles when moving. And how do muscles work? Muscles are attached to bones by tendons and help them to move. And when a muscle contracts, bunches up, it gets shorter and so pulls on the bone it is attached to. And when a muscle relaxes, it goes back to its normal size. Muscles can only pull and cannot push. Therefore, muscles have to work in pairs to move a joint. One muscle will contract and pull a joint one way and another muscle will contract and pull it the other. And always remember that muscles also protect the bones and organs by absorbing shock and reducing friction in the joints. Hi, my name is Lahmurin Egaro and in this video I'm going to explain what are the three types of muscle. So here are the types of muscle. First is skeletal muscle and it is long and cylindrical. Second is cardiac muscle, irregular bronze. And the last one is smooth muscle, fusiform. Skeletal muscles attach on the bones through tendons or direct attachment. So skeletal muscles are attached to bones by tendons and they produce all movements of the body parts in, re in relation to each other. Unlike smooth muscle and cardiac muscle, skeletal muscle is under voluntary control. So, let's proceed to smooth muscle. Smooth muscle shape is like a football or spindle. Smooth muscle is a type of tissue found in the skin, the erector pili muscles that cause goosebumps, tracks, in the reproductive, respiratory, and urinary system. Organs that are hollow, such as the intestines, bladder, uterus, and stomach. And vessels, smooth muscle helps blood vessels constrict. And the last one is eyes, iris, contraction, dilation, as well as the lens movement. Take note. 
smooth muscle has only one nucleus at the cell center. So let's proceed to the last one type of muscle which is the cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle tissue is found only in the heart. Cardiac means relating to the heart. Cardiac muscle is one of the three types of muscle tissue in your body. The other two types are skeletal muscle and smooth muscle tissue. Cardiac muscle tissue in, is only found in your heart to pump blood through your circulatory system. Cardiac muscle cells are called cardiomyocytes or cardiocytes. These cells make up the myocardium, the muscle layer of the heart. Structure of skeletal muscle the Skeletal muscle is made of a number of muscle bundles or fascicle held together by a common collagenous connective tissue layer called fascium. Its muscle bundle consists of a number of muscle fiber. Its muscle fiber is aligned by the plasma membrane called sarcolemma. In closing the sarcoplasm, muscle fiber is a synthesium as the sarcoplasm contains many nuclei and mitochondria. The endoplasmic reticulum, sarcoplasmic reticulum of the muscle fiber is the stone house of calcium ion. A characteristic feature of the muscle fiber is the presence of large number of farally arranged filaments. In the sarcoplasm called myofilaments or myofibrils. The myofibrils are stacked in compartments called sarcomets. Its myofibril has alternate dark and light bands on it. The study of myofibril revealed that the striated appearance is due to the distribution pattern of two proteins, actin and myosin. Both are constructile proteins. Both the proteins are arranged as rod-like structure parallel to each other and also to the longitudinal axis of the myofibrils. Actin filaments are thinner as compared to the myosin filaments, hence are also called thin and thin filaments. In the center of its eye band is an elastic fiber called G-line, which bisect it. The thin filaments are firmly attached to the G-line. The thin filaments in the A-band are also held together in middle of this band by a thin fibrous membrane called M-line. The A and I-band are arranged alternate throughout the length of the myofibrils. The portion of the myofibrils between two successive G-line is considered as functional unit of construction and is called sarcomere. In the resting state, the edge of the filaments on either side of the thin filaments partially overlap. The free ends of the thin filaments leaving the center part of the thin filament. The center part of the thin filament, not overlapped by thin filaments, it's called ethdun. After discussing the structure of skeletal muscles, the next part is to know the sliding filaments theory and how do skeletal muscles contract. What is the sliding filaments theory? The sliding filaments theory explains that muscle contract by shortening muscle fiber at sarcomere. So let's explain how this works. So the picture above shows part of myofibril called sarcomere 
which is the smallest unit of skeletal muscle that can contract. Within the sarcomere, we got a bunch of different structures that all line something like this. We can have thousands of these in each muscle cell, but to make things easy, we're focused on one section like this. When myosin actin fibers overlap and shortening the length of muscle cell, again start with a myofibrils, one part of muscle cell. The thick line is called myosin filaments, and the thin line is called actin filaments. When the nerve impulse reaches a muscle, calcium is rich in myofibrils. This calcium ion causes the myosin and actin filaments to attach to one another. When they attach, the myosin filaments drag the actin filaments to the center of sarcomere. As you can see here, this causes the muscle the shortening of contract. ATP is necessary for these contractions when the muscle relaxes. The filaments back to their original positions. So when you say muscle shortening, they contract. And when they lengthen, let's say back to the original positions, they are relaxed. So this is the sliding interaction between actin and myosin. Requires energy in the form of ATP. In step 1 of the figure, the myosin head are not yet connected to actin. Soon, however, a myosin head form a cross bridge by attaching to an exposed actin subunit on a thin filament. Step 2, the cross bridge spans pulling on actin and causing it to slide past myosin in the same way that an arse motion moves a boat. Step 3, the myosin head that binds a molecule of ATP and releases the actin. Step 4. ATP splits into ADP and a phosphate group, prompting the myosin head for swivel back to its original position. Step 5. The myosin head is now ready to contact another actin subunit farther down the thin filament. The cycle continues again and again until the brain sees movements.